I've had uh, a huge number of experiences during the course of this Lent of our church life flourishing across the diocese, flourishing in worship, in fellowship, in learning, in engagement, uh, experiences of flourishing faithful communities. I want to lift a few of these up just as examples to celebrate and give thanks they are examples of what is happening across the diocese in benefices and organizations, gloriously giving lie to any gloom that the devil would have us perpetrate. So just in the last three weeks, I spoke to, I, I made these numbers up, so um, uh, you can correct me afterwards. I spoke to nearly 100 people in Woodbridge Deanery on the fifth mark of mission, the care of creation, as part of their Lent series, and then to another 60 or so at Fressingfield on the topic of faith as part of their Lent series. 50 more at the cathedral, this time on religion and genocide as part of their series on religion and violence. I've engaged closely with the Colneys parishes in the appointment of a new priest in charge and with St Gregory's Sudbury also seeking a new priest in charge. I conducted confirmation at Framlingham College and in the meal afterwards with the head, the chaplain and the uh, local clergy of Framlingham learned of their commitment to work together and to bring and be good news for the whole town. Two Section 12 meetings in Waveney and Blythe, a visit to St Nicholas Hospice in Bury, and the installation of Rich Henderson in Beckles. Now, all of these I cite, and it sounds like you know I've just given you my diary, but it it all of these were vibrant occasions, engaged, lively, living occasions where Christian communities open to God's active presence seeking to learn and grow, engaging with change and challenge, were flourishing, were thriving in faith and in activity. And what makes these different, because we can think of all sorts of other configurations of people that we may be part of, other groups that may be learning or uh, engaged in a common task together. What makes these different and all the ones that we are part of in the life of our church is that it's all rooted in prayer and worship. These are all lives that we share with a different orientation, a different horizon, lives turned to God. The bottom line for me in the living out of the vision that we'll talk about in the, uh, later on in the agenda is the growing of a flourishing Christian presence in the midst of every community in Suffolk, making a difference by goodness and grace through congregations, schools, community engagement, through social media, and even, let me say, notice boards. As I travel around the diocese, I'm impressed at the number of churches that are physically open. As I go round, if I can, if I've got a chance, I'll stop and just pop in um, and uh, usually sign my name in the, in the visitor's book um, to the alarm of people who then look uh, later. <laughs> so watch out. Um, uh, and I, I'm really impressed at the number that are open, but I'm dismayed at the number that have no or sad notice boards. Um, I was one recently where I couldn't figure out for the life of me who the clergy were, when the services were, um, there was no uh, name of the uh, church outside. Um, these relatively simple things that we may have just got used to because it's always been this way are ways in which we can uh, communicate the vitality that we represent, that we hold. James Horsell, I know, is looking into seeing if there's some way in which together we can address uh, our paucity of good notice boards. Um, it's into this context of flourishing communities and, of course, some that are struggling that we have rejoiced to welcome Bishop Mike. In two most fabulous expressions of our Christian life together, in Westminster Abbey at his consecration and at the inspiring, inspirational service at our cathedral, 
I'm immensely grateful to Mike Philip Banks, James Thomas and Richard Hubbard for creating such a powerful welcome and witness and to all those, that host of people who were involved in that service. And Bishop Mike has come with the express charge, no pressure Mike, to help us grow as Christian communities to enable us to share the love of God in Jesus Christ to more and more people across this wonderful county. Let's welcome Mike. Do you want to stand up? Let me just say something personal here. One of the things that um, we've, we've decided to do before Mike got here is that um, whilst he's, his home is in uh, Mendelsham and he has uh, an office a study there, um, he will also share uh, my office in Park Road, so that um, I'm currently tidying it up, um, <laughs> but uh, uh, so that, that together we can work together and uh, a sense of, of, of uh, engaging in this, um, in this common purpose uh, in a way that enables that interaction that you have simply by working closely together. Um, let me also say again on a personal note, at the heart of uh, a Christian community is praying together. Before I came here I was part of a community of some 80 people who prayed together twice or even three times a day and before that in a parish where the ministers prayed, lay and ordained, prayed together at least once and usually twice a day. So it's been very odd and I would say spiritually enervating to find myself in a role where I'm, I'm not part of a sort of cons constant uh, gathering of people to pray. Um, now, of course, uh, uh, with Mary and with Sally and now with Susan, um, we, we try to say the office. I'm one of those people that needs discipline imposed by others uh, in order to stick to it. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm the only one. Um, <laughs> but uh, but to, have, to be able to have that sort of collective expectation that this is what we'll do. And one of the joys for me, the great joys for me, is having uh, Mike here now adding to that so that it, even, I know it's early days, we've only been doing this for two weeks, but, um, but we have, we have uh, got into a rhythm where when he's coming in, we'll, be, we'll both be there with Susan um, and we'll say the office at half past eight and uh, say that together. Uh, and uh, that's a, a huge blessing for me. Um, and it's brought home to me quite painfully the situation that many of us are in across the diocese where we do not have communities of people to pray with on a, on a, on a daily reg or regular basis. And I hope that some way or other we can find a way to address that for the sake of the spiritual well-being of all of us. I'm pleased that uh, one further dimension of praying together, which started on Ash Wednesday, is the bishop's staff saying morning prayer every Wednesday uh, in the diocesan office, in fact, in here. Uh, this is a big commitment for those who have to travel uh, a distance in, but it's a sign of the staff's desire to deepen their life together in God. Essential to our flourishing as Christian communities is our valuing and regard for one another. That means not thinking too highly of ourselves, not thinking of ourselves as better than the other person, not demeaning or diminishing others, either to their face or behind their backs. It's an important discipline for us all to heed for the sake of our Christian fellowship and for our witness to the wider community. So I'm pained by the number of cases that have come onto my desk of laity being extraordinarily rude to their clergy, rude and destructive, of cases of clergy being rude to laity, and indeed of clergy to one another. I understand there are times when we're exasperated or exhausted and say things we regret and then seek forgiveness. 
but I'm speaking here of situations where patterns of rudeness seem to have become almost the norm. This is not Christian behaviour. It seems not to just be an issue in this diocese, although I fear from what others have said that we may have more instances for, relative to our size than some. And other dioceses have, in response to this, put in place bullying policies. Archdeacon Ian has been working on such a policy for us, which will come to Bishop's Council. I'm sorry that it's have to, had to come to this, God calls us to live in relationships of the utmost integrity, truthfulness and trustworthiness. And abuse, harassment and bullying, however rare, cannot be tolerated in this or any diocese. The policy will mean that all complaints of abuse, harassment and bullying will be taken very seriously and thoroughly investigated. Continuing the theme of community, but on a much more positive note, one of the most encouraging experiences of Christian community, and if I can overuse my favourite word, flourishing again, um, flourishing Christian community, one of the most positive experiences that I've experienced recently was of the three-day residential shared conversations held with delegates from Ely and Norwich and our diocese. This is part of the nationwide process to have good, deep conversations happening around the issue of human sexuality and particularly homosexuality as preparation for the church discerning a way forward together. Our group of 11, and I'm going to ask them to stand up uh, and stand up, remain standing as I, I name them, those who are here, have included Jonathan Alderton Ford, Jane Held, Karen Galloway, Paul Hambling, Justin Rabbit, Sharon Coburn, Julia Lau, Gavin Stone, who we know isn't here, Carol Mansell, and Joanna Jones. And thank you. And I really appreciate those who, have, who are standing and those who are not here um, for the extraordinary commitment that they have all made, um, we one to another, in this process. So thank you. <clears throat> we met for supper before the event and then for supper again uh, a, a week or so after the event. Um, and the three days which were held at Ditchingham, so there were 11 of us, originally there was a group of 12, um, and we lost one at the last minute. There were 12 from Norwich, 12 from Ely. Um, the three days were held in a frame of confidentiality that enabled us to spe speak safely and honestly about our own experiences, our own thoughts on the issues, and our own feelings. The programme was, has been designed and facilitated by the Archbishop's Reconciliation Team and particularly by David Porter, the Archbishop's Director of Rec for Reconciliation, whom some of you will notice has just been appointed the Archbishop's new Chief of Staff. And he came and spoke to us about the recent Primates meeting, which had happened just the week before that we, um, we were gathering. In the course of the three days, we worked in small groups and in plenary, ably assisted by professional facilitators, the leader of which was Peter Woodward, brother of our George. He was brilliant um, and slightly unnerving because he was uncannily like his older brother <laughs> in speech and gesture. The opening small group session set the tone when we intently listened to each other's stories of how we'd come to the view we held as Christians about issues of sexuality. It was when we paid attention, deep attention, to one another as human beings and children of God that the quality and nature of our conversation changed. The shared conversations are not decision-making processes, but aids to the church's process of listening to views and experiences. The General Synod in July will spend two days in the same process of shared conversations as part of this process of listening. As a group from this diocese, what we most valued was the experience of deep listening and the changes that were affected in us as we both spoke and listened. 
and we'd like to find ways to use a similar approach across the diocese, not just for the matter of sexuality, but to enable us to share faith and experience, attending to one another as disciples, members of the one body, as we grow in faith and love. In relation to that, Bishop Mike and I are leading a Saturday morning session on May the 7th for clergy readers and elders. Some of you will remember that uh, back in um, October I did a morning on ministry in uh, Stowmarket and the intention was that we would do this on a regular basis. Um, that for all sorts of reasons has uh, not stalled, but has got slightly attenuated. There's a date in the diary for, for May, there's another date in the diary for October. But Matt, now that Mike is here, I'm hoping we can get uh, a, a pattern together where we host such events, whether for clergy and readers uh, and elders, or whether for laity, or whether for a whole mixture of people. Um, I think Mike and I both take very seriously that at the heart of our ministry as bishops is a teaching ministry, and we want to be able to um, exercise that. Um, on the morning in, on May the 7th, which will be for clergy readers and elders, will be about sharing faith. And we'll be looking at how we enable each other to listen to one another's faith stories and experiences with a view to then enabling people in our congregations and communities. We hope that we can encourage practices across the diocese to enable us to grow in confidence as we share in the ministry of evangelism. This will be, the, May the 7th, will be the start of the week of prayer for evangelism designated by the archbishops, um, the 8th to the 15th, leading up to Pentecost, um, and about which I understand, although I've not received one myself, I understand that clergy are meant to have received a letter from the archbishops inviting them to uh, engage with their congregations on this. I'm hoping that the morning with Mike and myself will be part of a process of building us all up as members of flourishing Christian communities, open to and engaged with our neighbours, tangibly sharing God's love. Thank you.